Hi everyone. If you have someone in your life who's obsessed with 90s retro gaming, then I have the cheat sheet to their heart. I'm going to be making a pixelated slab pie and peanut butter puzzle fudge. So get ready, player one. Let's bake. I've preheated my oven and taken my store-bought pastry out of the fridge so it's just come up to room temperature. Now I'm just going to lightly flour the surface so the pastry doesn't stick. And then I'm just going to be rolling out to about a quarter of an inch. So my pastry is looking great. So I'm just going to pop it into my greased tin now. And a good way to do this without ripping your pastry is to just fold it over your rolling pin, loosely roll it up, and it falls quite nicely in. And then we can trim off the excess with a knife, and that is going to become your pixelated heart. And then if we have any left over at the end, we can decorate the edges with the spare pastry. I'm just going to take a fork now and stab the bottom of the pie so that when we blind bake the pastry, it doesn't puff up in the oven. Now our pastry is trimmed, this can go in the fridge to chill for 15 minutes. OK, so now I'm just using the excess pastry to roll out, and that will form my heart. So I'm going to roll out to a similar sort of thickness, about a quarter of an inch, and that's what's going to form, eventually, the pixelated heart. So I'm just making sure it's nice and even, all on size. That. So I'm just going to cut around the template using a sharp paring knife. Now, I was a small child for most of the 90s, so I missed out on all this magic. But I'm not going to let that stop me. We're bringing back the 90s one bake at a time. So now that my heart is completely cut out, I'm just going to take off the template and then take this metal ruler and start scoring the lines of my pixels. You want to be really careful here, and it's kind of tricky, because you don't want to go all the way through the pastry. We're just literally scoring the lines. Right, now the scoring is done. I'm going to just scoop up my love heart onto this floured cake lifter, and then this can go into the fridge to chill. Now it's time to make our berry filling, which is super simple. So I've got my berries in a bowl, and then I'm just adding two tablespoons of flour, the juice of a whole lemon, teaspoon of cinnamon, and the zest from that lemon, and then our sugar. So just work the flour and sugar and everything together with the berries. Make sure everything is nicely coated, and this will get beautiful and juicy once it's in the oven. Great, that's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to bring in my pie that's been chilling in the fridge. And I've just taken the excess pastry that I had left over from my heart and used it to decorate the edge of the tray. So I've just gone around the edge and I'm crimping with my thumbs to make a nice pattern. We can fill our pie with the berry mixture. So I'm just going to pour it all in and then we can smooth it out with a spoon if it hasn't quite reached the corners. Just be careful not to stain the edge of the pie with any of this berry mix, because we want to keep that nice and fresh, making sure that we get right to the edge. That looks lovely. So now this is ready to go into the oven for 20 minutes. Now it's time to paint our pixels. I've got just a normal paintbrush here, and I'm just using food coloring and dabbing it straight onto the pixels itself. So you can be quite liberal, just so that these colors come out really nice and vibrant in the oven. I've got seven colours of the rainbow, and I'm just working my way up from orange to purple. So I'm just using all the colours that I think look best. It's not necessarily the rainbow order, but I like these combos. Great, that looks good. Our pie has been in the oven now for 20 minutes. I've reduced the heat and taken it out, and it's time to get our pixelated heart on top of our pie. So just be very careful, because these berries will be super hot, but you just want to slide it off and place it sort of in the center. Now that can go back in the oven for half an hour. While our pie is baking, I'm getting going with our peanut butter puzzle fudge. So I've got my milk and my granulated sugar in this pan, and I'm just heating it gently and stirring consistently so that all our sugar dissolves. Peanut butter is my kryptonite. I have it on everything. I have it on porridge, on toast, on apples, with Marmite. Try it, it's a real vibe. So, fudge makes perfect sense. It's two delicious foods coming together to make a really great combo. Now, just keep stirring and keep heating until it's boiling, and then we want to boil for about 10 minutes until we reach soft ball stage, which is 240 degrees. 
So I've reached 240 degrees now, so I can take my fudge off the stove. It's really important that you get it to 240 or softball stage, because if you don't, then your fudge won't set. So if you don't have a sugar thermometer, you can do this instead by taking a glass of iced water. So you just need to take out a spoon of the mixture, drop it into the iced water, and if it holds its shape, then it's at softball stage and you're good to go. Right, the next thing to do is to combine the rest of my ingredients. So I'm taking all of my peanut butter, it's a really healthy amount, and a tablespoon of vanilla essence as well. Yum. Careful it doesn't spit, and a tablespoon of butter. And once all of that's in, you just want to beat and beat and beat until the mixture is nice and smooth and glossy, and then it's ready to pour into your tin. Now, be really careful here, because although this has come off the heat, it's still extremely hot, and you do not want to burn your fingers or get any splashed on you, so just be really, really careful. It smells amazing. Just make sure it goes right to the edges, and you get all of that delicious fudge out of the pan. So now I'm going to put this to one side to chill completely. Now my fudge is completely cooled and set, I can start cutting. I'm going to go with the classic square, the L, the I, and my personal favorite, the T. So I'm just going to slice off a little slither rather than using the whole slab. So I'm going to start with a square. It's about a quarter of an inch by a quarter of an inch. OK, so I'm going to do the T. And I'm just going to slice first sort of a third on one side of this square and a third on the other. And then chop off those little bits. And we have a T. Great. So then you can just continue slicing the rest of your fudge until you've got it all into beautiful bite-sized amounts. Now it's time to dip our fudge. So I've melted some candy melts in the microwave and added just a little bit of vegetable shortening to make them a bit runnier. When I first did this, the candy melts were way too thick to dip. So you definitely need to add something just to make it a little bit more runny. And I'm just using these forks to dip so that I don't get any fingerprints on the fudge itself. So you can just drop it in with your hands and then move it around with the forks a little bit. It doesn't need too much. And these set really quickly, so it's just a quick dip and then onto the wire rack. Now, if you don't have fancy forks like me, then don't worry. At home, you can use bamboo sticks, chopsticks, a regular fork, just anything that'll stop you from actually touching the candy melts. I know they were all green and black in the 90s, but what can I say? It's 2018, and I am not afraid to use a little bit of color. So I'm going full rainbow on my shapes. The final thing to do is to just add the outline of each shape with some black candy melts, which I've got in this piping bag. And so you're just literally outlining the cubes within the shapes. And that gives it the nice, clean, graphic look that I'm after. You just want to get as close to the edge as you can and connect the lines where possible. And that's it for our retro gaming treats. The pie really does look incredible. But what I really want to try is this fudge. It's been teasing me. Mmm, yum. Nostalgia never tasted so good. To see more of my delightful creations like this pixelated slab pie, click here and subscribe to Genius Kitchen.